Today, let's talk about modifying our dry sump system. And let's talk about this new intercooler. Welcome back, everybody. Joe with Forged. This is our 10th update in the video documentary series on the shop drag car. It's a little bit of a follow up video to our Texas 2K recap video because uh, we had some issues with the dry sump pump from Peterson. We sent it off and uh, we've had it back for just about a week now, but we've made a few other changes to the car to address some of the things that were going on in the oiling system to make sure it doesn't continue to happen. So uh, we're going to take you just on a little bit of a tour there and then we're also going to talk about this bad boy that we put on right before Texas that we didn't have a chance to uh, show you guys. All right, so one of the things we learned from running methanol is that the oil temperature was never getting hot enough to boil off the alcohol from the oil. So we're making a few changes to the dry sump tank. One of them being this immersion style heater that you see here. So I basically had to uh, modify the side of the tank to uh, put that bung in there. And then if you guys are ever been curious, like I was, to how the what the inside of a dry sump tank looks like, kind of step you through what that is as I put this back together. So as you can see in the bottom there, the pickup tube on the bottom of the tank is on the side, but it's not all the way at the bottom. So the tube actually comes down into the bottom here to the center of the oil. So then there is a baffle that sits in the bottom of the tank that is notched right here to go around that tube. It fits down in there like that so then the oil has to climb up the sides of the baffle before it sloshes away from the pickup so from there the immersion heater gets installed in the side of the tank and it sits in between this baffle here and down over the lowest point of the oil we can get it relative to the uh, taper of the tank what this is designed to do is basically heat up the oil before we ever even start the engine. It plugs into a 110 outlet, so we'll just use the generator track side. It'll allow us to get the oil up to about 150 degrees of oil temperature to help boil off some of the methanol that we're seeing in the oil, which is condensating at the bottom, basically through the warm-up process in the car. So this should be one of the key differences, along with deleting the oil cooler, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So once you have that put on there, then this baffle sits on top of the tank. And as the oil swirls in from the feed here, basically hits this and there's a swirling effect, deteriorates the oil and then uh, comes down to the bottom of the tank for the pickup where the pure oil is. And basically this top vent is the ventilation for the oil that comes up through the center here and off to the the tank vent. That's what the tank looks like put back together. Just need to put the big V-band clamp on there. And uh, we already made some indexing lines on the, the tank. When we took it apart and put it right back the way it was so i thought that was pretty interesting i hadn't looked inside of a dry sump oil tank before i kind of knew there was some baffling and whatnot inside there but uh, now you guys can see how they do it all right so the reason we took this whole thing apart is what we're looking at here as you can see uh when we sent the stuff off to peterson they called me the next day because we overnighted it and said hey joe i i can't tell you why this pump failed but it shouldn't have done that and uh, we're going to cover it under warranty. Even though this thing was almost three years old, they rebuilt the entire thing at no cost to us, which I thought was awesome. I, you know, I never get that lucky. I was prepared to make a follow-up video to say, hey, we screwed up. We did this or that to the pump. But uh, it didn't end up that way. So just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of the reason why this pump got set back. And we sent this off <clears throat> in the last video. A little hard to pick up on the camera. You can see that the uh, face of the rotor 
was contacting the outer housing but if you look the face of the rotor was never coming in contact down in the uh, base of that uh, circle there so there was for some reason unexplained we don't know if it was the methanol saturation or what but I was kind of starting to see some aluminum in the uh, in the oil filter prior to us running methanol so I think this pump was doing something it wasn't supposed to do we don't know what Peterson couldn't tell us exactly why but uh, you know we're making a few changes to the pump to keep that from happening one of the things we did is we upgraded the uh, the pump itself this is a 1.2 inch pump the new pump is 1.4 inches so 200 thousandths wider to provide additional volume to the car because one of the things we were seeing at high RPM and we basically get 100 PSI oil pressure across the board but on the upper RPM range we do see a slight drop in oil pressure just a couple PSI 5 PSI and that is an indication that the uh, engine is requesting more pressure than the pump can provide so this should alleviate that problem we also changed the uh, the spring pressure and seat on the pump to accommodate the uh, the additional oil volume so we're gonna have to reset all that and play with it but uh, big props to Peterson for standing behind their product now if this happens again I don't think they're gonna cover it at no charge we we'll have to figure out why but um, all indications were the uh, clearances inside this pump weren't ever right quite right to begin with and once these aluminum rotors start eating themselves up it basically isn't gonna stop we're gonna put this back on the car have to shim the back of the pump uh, the brace that goes on the back here is you know 200 thousandths further back so we just got to put a little spacer in there to correct for that and uh, we'll be back up and running on the pump side all right what we're looking at here is the remote mount oil filter from Peterson it runs the Fram style racing filters with the big one and a half inch threaded shank. It supports these racing filters, Fram racing. I know they get a lot of uh, negative feedback on their oil filters, but their racing stuff is pretty legit. Them and uh, Wix. Uh, we just went with the filter that Peterson recommended. You know, since they stood behind the pump and told us what changes to make, we wanted to use exactly what they told us to use so we're going to try this HP 6A which is basically what they run in NASCAR and the uh, Pro Mod stuff for drag racing but this will take care of a few issues it'll eliminate the pressure drop that comes across the core on the oiling system when you put it through a, any type of a cooler you know intercooler oil cooler trans cooler you're gonna have a pressure drop across that core and so that should address that and also ultimately will address the problem we're having with getting the oil up to temperature. So that in conjunction with the uh, oil tank heater, you can see here it's now mounted on the car. It just plugs right into the wall. We're probably going to do a little something there to the front bumper with a mil spec connector so you can just plug it in without having to uh, carry this cord around with us all the time. But we're hoping that we'll get the oil up to temp, and ultimately what we're trying to do is get the oil hot enough to evaporate the alcohol out of it. That's what we were running into uh, in those with the oil before on the track. <clears throat> so that's what we decided to, to do to alleviate that. I do have a couple clamps coming to secure these oiling lines. Basically, the only thing we had to do to change the system was these two dash 12 lines that come out of the pump into the filter and out of the filter into the engine we just uh, had those remade by Brown and Miller to the proper lengths and the right angles here and then we'll uh, get this little bracket powder coated to support the oil filter it just clears the bumper when it goes back on obviously we're gonna make some changes to this probably next season and this whole front end of this car will look completely different after seeing what George's car looks like I pretty much have to have that, so uh, we're not going to do it this year because we actually we gotta get this thing out on the track. But uh, hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of insight into the oiling system. Now let's talk about the intercooler. So the intercooler is something that we decided to do pretty much at the last minute. 
we wanted to be competitive now obviously the event didn't turn out the way we hoped it would with the uh, oil pump not doing what it needed to do and the oiling system just not uh, performing it up to what we needed to safely run the car we didn't have the data that we needed hey I'll admit it we are new to running methanol on these cars and that was a learning experience for us and now we know what to do and how to make the changes to the car to support running that kind of fuel basically exclusively in the vehicle but uh, what we also want to do is make sure we had competitive horsepower some of these guys are sh in the uh, 68 millimeter class are claiming showing up with a claim 2000 horsepower I'm not quite sure how they're getting that those turbos can only produce so much airflow but uh, maybe they're running something other than m1 methanol they might be putting a little m5 in there or uh, you know something else i don't know but one of the things that will give us a, a nice power boost and give you consistent power all the way down the track is a water to air setup uh, this is designed to run basically three gallons of water i know uh, some teams run a little less some teams run a little more you can probably cram about five gallons in this thing if you wanted to but uh, based off of what i tested three gallons basically fills it up to the top of the core uh, the reason I like this system so much is it is completely self-contained with what you see here. So let's flip the video around. <clears throat> Each side has its own water pump that takes the fluid coming from the core that you can kind of see on the back side there. It takes it from the bottom, pumps it back up to the top, and inside of here is a spray bar. And ETS has done a, quite a bit of testing, and basically, you know, that's how they distribute the cold water across the core and make sure that everything is uniformly cooled. You don't have, you know, the water temperature basically throughout the entire system is as uniform as it can possibly be. Uh, some of the things that we had to do to make this fit, I was able to retain all of the lower piping without changing it at all. But the upper piping, they basically cut you off right about here. And then uh, you figure it out from there. I've seen a couple people put some hard 90 degree cast bends on there. That uh, That's one way to do it, but that's, you know, one thing you're trying to do is avoid any hard turns in a turbocharger system because anytime air has to make a sharp turn it's going to heat up and uh, once it's gone through the core the last thing you want to do is reheat the air back up making a couple sharp bends before it enters the engine we tried to make those as smooth as possible and i wanted to kind of play with these vanjin style clamps, clamps. Now, i wish i could have made the um, intercooler pipes uniform but with the way the car is currently set up with the dry sump tank the filler and the dipstick is right there and you have to snake this tube just around there and there's basically just enough room to fit that through the other thing that we did was switch to these qrj blow off valves from tile they were able to help us out there you know uh we've kind of been asking around a lot of guys that are running mototech specifically you know why are you running these blow off valves and not the normal q valves and it all comes down to boost response and especially on gear change uh, some guys are documenting uh, little boost spikes on gear change and when on, on lift off on throttle and these alleviate that problem haven't seen that uh, we were seeing just a little bit of a spike but you know we're not running the kind of boost pressure that some of these big cars are but uh, we're happy with the change that was made there as well so on the top of the intercooler, you can see the uh, there's two fillers, and when you open this up, it's the same on both sides. All right, so that's how the system works. You see, it's got a spray bar that it just flushing the cold water and circulating it back through the core it's a pretty ingenious design it's all compact all in one the water tank the pumps everything is contained in one unit 
right, now we didn't get a ton of data from the water to air setup, but I can share with you on the one pass we did make, we actually dropped 25 degrees Fahrenheit from the beginning of the run to the end of the run. Now there's going to be a little bit of heat soak on the intake manifold, but uh, we just had cold water because you know, it was pretty cold in Texas that morning when we ran the first time. I think it was only 55 degrees or you know just touching 60 degrees the time we went down the track but uh, we did not see a temperature rise at all it actually lost 25 degrees like i said that was really impressive and then we didn't even have ice in the thing we wanted to just kind of get it down the track and see what it would do and i think the other teams are seeing similar results i can't wait to see what this thing will do you know at full power in the heat with ice running through it i think we'll have some pretty impressive data to share with you guys and uh we also didn't see any uh, degradation in coolant temperature, but you know, it's a little bit skewed because we run methanol. Basically, you don't ever see this engine get above the 190 degree thermostat temperature ever. On the dyno, anywhere, the temperatures stay fairly low, and that's just further contributes to the problem of getting the oil hot enough to boil off the alcohol in the tune up. So, we're gonna make a few changes to the car and the tune, make it run as lean as we possibly can and keep it happy to get it up to temperature and then we'll settle it back down in and uh, the lambda that we like to run but from there uh, we're gonna get back out to the track here hopefully within the next week uh, just waiting on some fresh Brad Penn to stick back in here I didn't have quite enough here on hand from uh, when we were at the track I used a little bit uh, trying to figure out what was going on with the car and wasn't sure if we were gonna run it again or not but uh, as soon as that comes, we're going to do a private track rental, get as many passes as we can under our belts, and then we're going to probably be at, back out at the next event for Speed Addicts that uh, we just found out about in South Georgia coming up in the middle of May. So with that, we'll see you guys on the next video.